Uh, so what I want to do is give you a stupid little example of goal, objective, plan, strategy, and tactics. So here's an example. Let's say my goal was to be the strongest man in the world. Here's an example of three measurable objectives. Measurable meaning things that you can count. The reason why your objectives need to be measurable is you need to be able to figure out if you're making progress. If you said one objective is to have 20%, then you need to know that so that if you're making some progress, you got 8%, okay. Next time you've got 10%, that's better. Next time you've got 20%, that's better. So you're making progress, right? So that's why objectives have to be measurable because if you're not making progress, you change your plans. Remember Einstein said the stupidest thing that you could do is the same thing over and over again and expect different results. So one of the reasons why you've got plans to achieve measurable objectives is because if the objectives aren't being met, you change your plans. Now, if I said my objective was to be the strongest man in the world, here's three simple measurable objectives. One, bench press 900 pounds, if that's a world record, okay? Uh, secondly, to be able to deadlift 1,100 pounds, right? And next would be able to squat 800 pounds. So if that was the world record for all three events, and I could do that, then I could say I am the strongest man in the world. And that would be the three measurable objectives by which I could make that claim. So the reason why you do that is because when you're training, let's say it's the month of August, and you can bench press you know, 700 pounds, you say, that's kind of so-so. And you look at your deadlift, you say, I can deadlift 900 pounds. Well, maybe you should do less exercising here and more work on your bench. Because if you're deadlift training on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and you're only doing your bench on Thursdays and whatever the other day I said, Saturday, then that would give you some indication that you should change the focus of your resources. Okay, so that's how you would do all your plans. Now, an example of strategies and tactics would be, tactics would be if you're bench pressing, you have your thumbs around the bar, or over the bar, narrow grip, wide grip, those are things like tactics. So your elbows are locked, or you've got a spotter for forced reps, those are tactics. And strategies would be things like, well, I'm going to do my bench press in the morning because that's when I'm strongest, or I might do it at nighttime, or I might do it before I do my run, or after I do my run. Those are things to do with the strategies, okay? So that would be an example of three measurable objectives. The other thing, too, is part of developing a goal is you have to find out what the competition is. If I say my goal is to be the strongest man in the world, I need to know what are the other men doing. If someone else is bench pressing 900 pounds, and it looks like they're improving to 920, 930, I also have to make sure that that's something that I can achieve as well. Okay? Okay. Here's another example. If you said you wanted to be the largest car dealership in Toronto, a way of having three measurable objectives would be to say you want to be the largest dealership in Scarborough, the largest dealership in North York, and the largest dealership in Mississauga. Because if over a period of time you were selling a lot of cars in Scarborough and kicking ass in Markham, but somebody else in Mississauga was doing better, like 41DixieDesign.com, you know that guy on the radio? You could not say you are the largest car dealership in Toronto because this guy in Mississauga is kicking your ass. So that's sometimes why you take a goal and divide it up into measurable objectives. So if you're the person who's in charge of the car dealership system that you've got, you could say, listen, we should take some of our salesmen out of the Scarborough office and move them to Mississauga. Or we should buy more radio advertising or our website should focus on the location or have some kind of event or something like that. So that would be an example of a company that had a goal to be the largest car dealership and they divided up by geographics. Okay? Here's another example of a silly goal. Let's say your goal is to win the Miss Universe pageant. Right? You can have four measurable objectives. One of the most obvious ones is to win Miss Texas. You have to win uh, the, the area in which you live, the city or the province or the state. Then you'd also have to win the country, so you'd have to win Miss USA then you'd be able to compete in the Miss Universe, right? So that would be one objective, is that you would be the Miss so-and-so of a country which was a contender, like Venezuela, USA, something like that, right? The second thing is the skills that are competitive. You have to have the charitable thing. You also have to be able to answer the skill testing question, like what country is Africa in? 
Google that, you'll find it's funny. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have maps, and uh, I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S., or, or should help South Africa, and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries, so we will be able to build up our future for our Thank you very much, South Carolina. Uh, another one is uh, you've got to do some talent show, you know, spinning a ball on your nose or something like that, right? So those would be another example of measurable objectives. Companies also can divide their objectives up into measurable units. For example, they could say, uh, they could do it by quarters. They can say by Q1 2012, we will achieve 20% increase in sales in our camera line. By Q3 2012, we'll increase 50% sales in our industrial optics line or our sport accessories line and that allows them to be able to focus on how much advertising and website development and TV commercials they should put on each one of those product lines. Right? 